All right, I think we're good. <laughs> hey, everybody. I am Hannah with Ugly Mug and I'm also Hannah with Ugly Mug. <laughs> so just to keep things, you know, super confusing, um, there are two of us. Uh, our clients typically refer to us as Hannah A and I'm Hannah B. Um, but just um, we just wanted to come to you today and um, us, like so many organizations, are you know our whole office is working from home, and we just wanted to share with you some things that we've been doing to keep keep each other accountable, um, you know, keep us in the same um, work mode as if we were in the office, and those kinds of things. Uh, I think Hannah wants to kind of start off with an accountability strategy she came up with. Yeah, so working from home is a lot different for us um, than working in our office. If you've ever been in the Ugly Mug marketing office, I don't know if y'all, whoever's tuning in, if your office is similar, but we have basically one giant open room. And so it's very easy uh, to kind of check in and see how other people are doing. You can like, I literally sit across from Jessica <laughs> in our office. Um, and so it's easy to kind of bop around to different um, desks, check in see how people are doing if you have a question it's very easy to access people basically and so going from that space to working from home it definitely can feel a little isolating um and i think it also for some people it can kind of become um it makes it a lot easier to slack honestly, <laughs> um, is the truth of it. Um, when you're at your own home, nobody is checking in on you. Nobody can physically see you working. Um, you have to find ways to hold you yourself accountable. You have to lead yourself. And then it's also really important though, that you're leading those who report to you, leading, um, other people in the office, holding them accountable. And so, um, on day one <laughs> of us working from home, um, I was like, all right, I feel like I need to set the tone for myself um, and for the one person who reports to me, um, you know, what are the expectations going to be? And I knew that it wasn't going to be perfect, whatever I put together at first, um, but it was going to be something um, that we could stick with for a little bit and kind of tweak and evolve as we needed it to. And I'll let Hannah Broom kind of touch on those um, changes uh, and ways that it's evolved for her and um, Gina on our team. But essentially, the first thing I started with was this. All right, we need to have a morning, afternoon, and end of day check-in. Now, for some teams, this may be <laughs> overkill on the check-ins. You might say, I don't need to hear from you at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, basically. Um, but for us, I really felt like I personally needed that. I needed to be able to share with someone easily, hey, these are my priorities for this morning. Um, here's what I'm committing to working on. Here's what I'm committing to completing during this time. Check in at lunch, say, hey, here's what I did. Here's what I'm committing to this afternoon. And then checking in again at the end of the day, did I complete those afternoon test tasks? Yes or no. And I think one thing that um, has really helped is a tool that we use in our office called Basecamp. So this is something that everyone in our office was already familiar with. So I knew if I set this up for Lydia and myself that it would be super easy um, for us to go ahead and adapt to using. So I'm going to share that with you here. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Basecamp, it's basically a tool that we use to communicate with our clients and to communicate um, with us or with each other internally. And uh, I love it because you don't have to be logged into your email to use it. You could just log into Basecamp. You can see your entire conversations um, with either the client or with the team member. And one really awesome feature that they have is automatic check-ins. So this is where I kind of went in and set up automatic check-in. So every day at 7.50 a.m., Lydia and I both get an email and it says, um, has a link to our Zoom call. So we check in um, via video for that first check-in. Just say, hey, how you doing? Have some human interaction because <laughs> right now um, that is super important for me. Um, I am definitely uh, very... Um, 
like uh, extroverted. And so I like talking to people <laughs> and feeling connected. And so it's really important for me to have that morning check-in. And then we verbally state what our three biggest commitments are to each other that morning. Um, and then we uh, also share them here in this thread. So every morning Lydia checks in. Um, so hers was this morning, I will work on the Ugly Mug Marketing Instagram posts. I will call Jay, publish the event ad finish the ONA strategy, and then have a Zoom call with Mrs. Laborde. Mine were to finish um, some ads for and posts for Glass et cetera, um, creating some posts for Tom McBride, another one of our clients, and then starting some ads for him as well. So this is just holding us both accountable. We both have to answer this question every morning. Um, we have to hop on that Zoom call. And then for the afternoon ones, um, we don't necessarily hop on video um, unless it's totally needed, um, but it we still have to answer those questions. So noon check-in is what are your top three priorities um, for the afternoon and what are your top three um, afternoon tasks? Um, and then, or sorry, what were your top three AM priorities? Did you complete those things? And then what are your afternoon tasks? And then at the end of the day, like I said, just did you complete those things or not? And then we started all over every single day. Um, I know Hannah has made some um, changes to this uh, kind of process of checking in and accountability. So I'm gonna turn it over to her for a second to kind of share what those changes are and how she's adapted this process to work for her team. Yeah, so I am, the other Hannah is in charge of the social media department. I am in charge of traditional media um, or traditional marketing, I'm sorry. And Gina is on my team as well. And so for us, some of the things that we do, maybe just slightly different is if there's anything that we do not accomplish, we have to give a reason as to why we don't accomplish it. Um, because again, it's just so easy to lose track of things whenever you're working from home um, without that accountability. And there are certainly situations where other things are bigger priority or something like that. So it's absolutely makes sense that you don't accomplish that. Um, but I also just, you know, want to help keep us ac accountable. Um, and then something else that we do is we used to just do, you know, our top three, but then once I started realizing it, you know, sometimes some tasks take longer than others. So I didn't want to just put three things. If I know these three things are very, very important, but they're only going to take 10 minutes. So I don't always put three. Sometimes I'll put five because I know that I have each of them are very important, but they won't take as long. And then sometimes I might only put two. I know that I'm going to have a big meeting this morning and that's going to take up a lot of time. So being honest with yourself, because even though it's a very, very good system, you can find ways to cheat the system. And so you have to keep yourself honest. So make sure that you are putting things on that list that will use your time honestly. Something else I quote, I wish I remembered the exact wording that Wayne uses a lot is, you know, work as if someone's standing over your shoulder and you have to justify to them what you're doing at any given time. So kind of like if you were being audited at the end of the day and they're like, hey, did you spend your time wisely throughout the day? I think, you know, he's always said that phrase even when we are in the office, but I think it's even more accountable, even more applicable when we are at home and not in the office. Yeah, and I love that you guys, um you and Gina have kind of implemented stating a reason why you didn't accomplish something because yeah, it definitely is easy to kind of lose track of things. And I definitely think that Lydia and I should start um, implementing that too, because, you know, it's hard because all things feel important all the time, especially in times like these. And I know in our office, we are trying to be as flexible as possible um, with our clients and do whatever it is that we can do um, to help them at this time, even if it's outside of the parameters of the contract that they signed with us. I'm like, at this point, I'm like, throw the contract out the window, <laughs> you know, <laughs> do you need me to come and make spaghetti at your restaurant? You know, what do you need from me? How can I best serve you? Um, and so with that though, it's like, okay, you kind of have to weigh what's more important you know, what do I actually need to take care of? Okay, when I made this list this morning, these were the most top three important things, but instead, you know, something else came up that was more pressing. So I really like having those, um, that other layer of accountability and having um, to kind of add in those reasons. Um, next thing that I wanted to touch on is tools. These might be tools that we've already used in our office. Um, or tools that we are now starting to use more. Um, Hannah, I'll let you touch on what are some of the like tech, 
technology <laughs> resources that you're kind of tapping into a little bit more um, now that we're all working from home? Yeah, so something else that helps with that account accountability situation is if there's something that we're stuck on, that's a great opportunity for us to share what we may be stuck on. And, you know, when you're in the office together, it's so easy just to walk up to the other person and walk through them with them or, you know, kind of hash that out together. Um, so there's a lot of times that we jump on, you know, Google Hangouts or um, this, Zoom, something so that we can share our screen and walk through it together. But there's also times when maybe it doesn't need to be a live demonstration or it needs to be a video that's saved so they can go back and reference it. So we also use um, a free software called Loom, L-O-O-M, and you can record your screen and then send it to somebody as a link. So, you know, if we're setting up something and we need to record what the screen looks like, we use this for clients all the time. But here lately, it's been something that we use more internally too. So if we need help, you know, actually explaining something, because you could sit there and type it out and it's going to take you twice as long and it's not going to make nearly the same amount of sense as just doing a quick video. And I don't know about you, but it just is nice to see another face or hear another voice right now whenever you're stuck at home, you know, working alone. Yeah, for sure. I'm just pulling up Loom right now so everyone can see what it is. This is like super duper user friendly. Um, like we said, we've used this in the past, but now it has become... Um, like an even better tool for us to be able to use. Um, you can see um, if somebody has ever viewed the video, how many times it's been viewed. So you can tell if your teammate or your client or whomever has actually watched your video. Um, you can have your face on the screen or a little icon in the corner, just a photo of yourself, or it can just be strictly your screen. Um, but yeah, this is definitely a great tool. Um, I feel like I haven't totally utilized this over the last couple of weeks, but I know that as we continue on um, with the stay at home order um, and all of that, I'm sure I will be using this a lot more <laughs> for Lydia and I both and the rest of our team and our clients. <laughs> yeah. And it's something that we also use instead of just like one-to-one, -one, it's something that we'll use with our whole team. So if there's something I need to explain to everybody and I don't wanna make everybody get on video chat together, we can record it and send it to everybody. Yeah. Something else that we do in the office and we are making sure that we honor this even though we're outside of the office too, is we try to limit the times that we distract one another. So typically the last 10 minutes of the hour, so 9.50 to 10 o'clock or 10.50 to 11 o'clock, you know, those last 10 minutes of every hour is the time that we try to distract one another to ask questions. And so that we're not constantly, you know, jumping in on everybody throughout the day. It's proven that you should work for 50 minutes and then take a 10 minute break and that your mind works better that way. So we kind of piggyback on that concept. And if we need to talk to each other, like for example, this morning, Hannah and I had a question for each other. We still waited to those last 10 minutes to call one another, or text message each other, because it really helps. Again, it's so hard to have distractions at home. So the more that you can eliminate the distractions for yourself, the distractions for your teammates, the better. Something else, I heard this on a podcast the other day, and it's so true, is make your office space at your house, even though, you know, I don't have a, you know, an actual office here at my house, I'm using my dining room table, but make it to where it has everything you need. So when you sit down in the morning, bring your glass of water, your chapstick, your AirPods, whatever it is that you might need and put it there. Because every single time you get up to go get a water, you're going to get distracted. Or if you get up to go get a chapstick, you're going to get distracted. So the more you can, you know, just like in your regular office, you would stay in your seat longer. The more you can help yourself stay in your seat and cause less distractions, the better. Yeah, for sure. I think along those same lines of making sure that your space is in order and making sure that you have everything you need and kind of going back to also us trying to still hold those same principles and that structure that we have in the office. I think it's really, really important right now for people to set a schedule for themselves. Um, and part of that is, okay, um, like in the morning, if you're like me, I have a really hard time sitting in one spot. And so everyone in our office knows that I like to jump around and I'm never at the same spot for too long. I we call her the office nomad. Yes, I'm very nomadic in that way. And so for me, I have to tell myself, all right, this morning, this is going to be my office. This is where I'm going to sit. I'm gonna work on these things. And then I'm gonna have lunch. 
And it's very, very important, still take your lunch break when you're working from home. It can be super easy to just work through lunch. Um, maybe you don't need to take as long of a lunch break. Maybe if you had an hour, maybe you only need 30 minutes now, but still give your brain that break. It will do your brain wonders and it will thank you later. Uh, but kind of coming back to that uh, schedule, then I know in the afternoon, I'm gonna go work from the dining table or whatever it may be. Um, really kind of setting those guidelines for yourself um, and creating that structure, even though you're not in the office is still really important um, and will help you be um, continue to be productive. Um, so we've talked about accountability. We've talked about some tools that you can use, the importance of structure um, in your day and kind of sticking to some of those same um, schedule and routine things in your office that you would normally have. A couple other things that we have to talk about uh, with y'all today on our whole work from home <laughs> live that we're doing here um, is one of them is ways to stay connected. And I'll let Hannah talk about that. Yeah, so one really, really kind thing that Wayne did for us this week is we typically all try to get together once a month and do a team lunch. And Wayne could have easily said, you know, no restaurants are open, we're working from home, so we're not doing a team lunch. But instead, he sent us all a text message yesterday and said, hey, go pick up dinner for you and your family on me. And I thought that was just, that was really, really kind. And um, I know that my family will appreciate it. I know all of our families will appreciate it. And it's a way of us you know, even though we're not seeing Wayne on a daily basis, we know that he still cares about us. So I think that was super duper kind. So maybe, uh, I don't know about y'all, but I love receiving things in the mail because I never receive things in the mail. So maybe it's a simple, just like handwritten letter that you send to one of your coworkers just to let them know like, hey, I haven't seen you in two weeks. Like I haven't seen Hannah in two weeks, which is so weird because I have seen you constantly for the past several years. So just something to touch, reach out and say, hey, How's it going? I think that is super important. Something else that we haven't done yet, but I really want to is create like a Spotify playlist of encouraging songs that we can all listen to together. Uh, even when we're in the office, we typically all are listening to different things, but I just love the concept of us all listening to the same thing to show some kind of union or, you know, we, we're still all together, even though we're in separate places. Yes, I've seen so many um, different organizations. Our church even has a playlist that um, I love it. We've created, and um, I've seen other churches that have created playlists, and they've asked their um, congregation to add to that playlist too. So that's definitely something fun that you can do um, with your team. And I love the idea of sending some like happy mail to your team members. Um, it could be a really fun thing to do. Everyone maybe draws a random person out of a hat and you send them um, some happy mail. And maybe it's even um, your, your budget is $10 and you can send them a little gift or a little package in the mail. I know that now that I'm home, I'm very aware of when the mail comes. Yes. <laughs> and so um, that I, could be another fun thing to do with your team. Yeah, something else I was going to mention, a company that I recently founded, and I did not find it, I found it on the internet. Um, it's called Greetable. It's G-R-E-E-T-A-B-L, I think. It's um, a little bit different than the traditional spelling, but they're pretty inexpensive. It's just like a little box, and it comes in like different designs, and then you can include photos, and then like a little bit of gift on the inside. I really like it because it's very personalized and it's, it's a super cute package, but it's not overly expensive. It's not like, you know, a hundred dollar gift basket basket. So I certainly recommend that if you're looking for, you know, an inexpensive gift to send somebody. Yeah. Um, this morning I was even sharing with Hannah to, um, an Instagram account that I actually think I've been following for quite some time now. Um, but they're called, I'm pulling it up on my phone now. Um, career. Contessa. Um, I will link them um, down below. I don't know if y'all can see that at all, um, but lately we can. <laughs> uh, lately, they've been posting just some like really helpful tips from working from home, or maybe people um, have been laid off from their jobs, um, and so how can they be spending their time wisely as a professional? Um, who's maybe on the job search right now, or maybe they're struggling, or maybe they need help um, learning how to file for unemployment, um, different things like that. They also had a really great template um, for a check-in process too. Um, their check-ins were for every Monday and Friday. Um, so they have a template that you can follow here. Um, 
And they've just got a bunch of different other fun things that you can do with your team. Um, a couple of those Hannah and I mentioned, um, but they were talking about having um, virtual lunch. So instead of our team lunch, uh, Wayne is treating us all to dinner, which is awesome. Uh, but one of the ideas that they had on here was uh, still having that team lunch and just doing it virtually. Um, they had, um, for everyone to do the strengths finder quiz all together and then have a little um, meeting and everyone share what their strengths were. Um, they had the collaborative playlist, the gift exchange, um, and just all kinds of other fun ideas. So definitely um, if your office is working from home, I would highly recommend going and checking out their Instagram account. I will link that um, in this below this live <laughs> once we're all wrapped up and done here. Um, last thing I had on here was staying focused. Hannah, what are you doing to help you stay focused and keep track somewhat of the days while you're working from home? I mean, I think the little accountability thing that we've been talking about has been the biggest help for me. Mm -hmm. I think keeping myself encouraged. I have a, a little thing that I keep my pen in and my pens in and it has a dry erase board. So yesterday I put like a motivational quote on there. It's all about perspective, you know, being positive, not, you know, being upset that I'm stuck at home instead of saying I'm instead saying I'm at home, I'm safe, I'm healthy, I'm getting a lot of work done and looking at the bright side. I think just perspective and accountability has been the best two things for me. And just really keeping myself, I still get to work. I still sit down at my computer at the same time every day. Like you said, still take my lunch break at the same time. Try to keep it as consistent as possible as well. Yeah, I agree. Um, those morning check-ins for me with Lydia are probably the thing that's helping keeping me most sane. <laughs> um, definitely still taking my lunch break at the same normal time that I would. Um, one thing, Hannah, that I know you and I have both shared that we've kind of struggled with, though, is at the end of the day. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, and so, like, normally, um, I actually have an hour-long commute to and from work. And so I am used to packing up all my things, getting in my car. And while there have certainly been days that I have complained um, for never ending periods of time <laughs> about my commute. I actually really miss my commute lately because that used to be my kind of quiet time by myself. Um, listen to a playlist, listen to a sermon, listen to a podcast, kind of unwind um, before I get home um, and make dinner and see my fiance. Um, that time was really, really precious to me. So I'm trying to find new ways to unwind at the end of the day. So at the end of the day at my workspace, I close my laptop, I pick up my charger, I pick up all of my stuff. I don't leave it there. I put it in my bag <laughs> and I yep. put my bag on our counter, which is where, where I normally would put it if I was preparing to go to work for the next day. So I try and keep myself in that same routine. And then Hannah, I know you and I talked about this, but like taking the dog on a walk. Yes. <laughs> Hannah Broom and I are both dog moms. <laughs> yes. And that's been so helpful for me, for me too, because I, the same thing, I have to pick everything up and put it away. Um, so I'm not looking at it. I'm like, okay, the, I'm leaving the office. I take my dog on a good long walk. Um, and then when I get back, it's my brain says, okay, I just got home from work. I'm not still at the office because it's, it's a blurry line right now with, when I'm at work and when I'm, you know, on personal time. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, that is all that we have for you Facebook friends who are tuning in watching this live or who will go and watch this later. We hope that these tidbits of information on accountability and schedule and unwinding at the end of the day is something that will help you while you are working from home. Um, I know that it, it can be a very isolating time, but we encourage you to get connected with your team, get connected with your friends and family, have group Zoom calls, have group zoom happy hour facetime call people um and make sure you let your people know um that you're thinking of them and that you care about them because this time though it is a blessing for some it is a very 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 hard season for others to be away from people um and to feel isolated so just make sure that you're checking on your people you're loving on them whether that's your team your family your church whatever community you're a part of um that is a super important thing too
Hannah, do you have anything else? I, I agree. I've been doing all the Zoom after hours as well, happy hours, church meetings, all that fun stuff. I think that has been uh, very helpful for me as well. Yeah. Stay healthy, stay safe, and everybody have a good Easter. Yep. Bye, everybody. <laughs> See y'all later.